Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 772, Martin Luther King Day, January 17th, 2022. We had a high of 44 degrees on this day. Is that right? In 1894. And it was 26 below in 1967. And tonight we have a full moon. The Ojibwe referred to it as the Great Spirit. And the Lakota referred to the uh, full moon at this time of year as hard times. Mm. And now, from the mayor's office, above the boathouse, on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic. With Rookie on Production, Chris Reavers, Director of Social Media, John Hyde in the Newsroom, and occasionally Kenny from the Krabby Coffee Shop, here is your Flashlight King, Fireworks Commissioner, and Keeper of Common Sense, your Mayor, Joe Souchere. You know what else today is besides uh, MLK Day? Let me guess. Okay, let me guess. I know, I know. First day where sunset is past 5 o'clock. Yeah, it is that, but there's one more. Isn't it Muhammad Ali's birthday? I don't know. What I was going to say is it's Blue Monday. Oh, Blue Monday, sure. The most depressing day of the year. The third Monday in January. Do you feel blue? Not really. Yeah, yeah but you, I always, you always I, do. I, I always do. <laughs> you had a rousing weekend. Yes, I did. You drove to Buffalo. I did. I left here Friday after the show. Mm-hmm. Got to... What was that city in Michigan? On the Michigan-Indiana border, spent the night. Yeah. Got up, made it to the tailgate lot by 3.45 for the 8 o'clock game, Oof. which was completely full. And you were under the mistaken notion that you were going to be indoors in a suite. Yeah. And that didn't work out. No. we you were, were outside. We were in the elements. Yeah. And it was not warm. South yeah. Bend? No, 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 no. Niles? It was a New, Gary. New Buffalo, Michigan, New is, Buffalo the, Michigan is the city I spent the night in on Friday night. And by the way, I have to get when Rook, when Rook gets in, I'll give him uh, credit too, but Patrick Hammer, former KSTP meteorologist, now lives uh, in Buffalo and does weather for the NBC affiliate. In Buffalo, New York. Correct. And he uh, found out I was heading that way, and he said, what time are you leaving Sunday? And I said, well, I was planning on getting out there early. You realize they got a foot of snow yesterday Ooh. and are getting it right now. He said, get your ass out of town really? or you're going to get stuck here. <laughs> and well, he also said to say hi to you guys because he listens to the show. Yeah. All I can tell you is cool. that Hammer's youth, awesome. Youth, yeah. is, youth is wasted on the young for, for that trip. That was <laughs> Reavers, um, you SOB, you dumb SOB. You're the king of the road trip, my friend. I my hat's it. off to you. I absolutely love the road trip. Hats I couldn't off, sit still brother. that long. Oh, it's great. You get to see the country, baby. Yeah. You yep. know? <laughs> Did you go through Cleveland? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right by Lake Erie, man. Right where, where the, is it Highway, I believe it's the Whatever. It, Highway it's 90. In, Interstate 90. Yes, correct. Thank you. Wine's right around the uh, the, the, the shoreline. It's Do you recall, cool. uh, I think it was Friday, and we all recoiled at the news that uh, John had of a, a, a fellow in New Zealand who... Uh, had a cockroach in his ear. Yes, I yeah. do. I do. Uh, Joe, back in the 1970s, when I was working at an a, at a inner city emergency room in Chicago, a mom brought in a six month old baby oh. who had not slept oh. in three days and was crying all the time. I started to check him over and couldn't see his eardrum, so started to clean it out. Out popped a live cockroach that oh. scurried under the table. Oh! The child instantly fell asleep, and Mom gratefully took him home. Never did find the cockroach. It probably went looking for a different ear. Michael Ainsley sent that in. So I guess it happens, fellas. Uh, no more of those email, uh, emails, I, I, you know, GLs, please. To have a please. GL doctor weigh in, having it had uh, happen to him, that's uh, incredible. No, this is stuff I don't want to hear about because I won't be able to... S- of course, there aren't any cockroaches in my house. Stacy, the GL geologist, is I weighing hope. in on the underground volcano eruption in Hunga Tonga Hunga hmm. uh, in the uh, Tonga region. Uh, it's near Tonga in the Pacific Ocean. I had to look it up. It's 6,818 miles from Minnesota, but it's uh, southwest of Hawaii yep. and east 
of Australia. Yes. And I'm just uh, terribly amused at uh, the people who think they're going to save the earth if they change their light bulbs. <laughs> this, you, you, can we stop that, do you think? I don't think can so. Can we prevent that no. in the future? No. Would there be a price on that? We could J- John Kerry could go over there with his cape? No, they're going to somehow uh, stop these tidal uh, waves. What uh, island did you say that that was? Tonga. My, my fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and uh and capsize uh, that's we're, we don't anticipate uh, that sir we don't anticipate that uh, <laughs> hunga tonga hunga hapai and uh there is great video that's uh, available uh kelsey sent some that he got from uh i guess it's off youtube but i think the, the london telegram has some it's uh it's incredible and to think that <laughs> It's so preposterous to think that humans can mm-hmm. control nature. It's insanity, mm-hmm. well, which isn't what they're really attempting to do anyway. The whole movement, again, has nothing to do with the environment. Well, then maybe what we should do is get Greta on that personalized boat again yeah. and have her head that way and maybe get to the bottom of this. And, and it was such a major explosion, if you watch it, and just... Cloud after cloud of black ash emerging from the ocean. It's just extraordinary. And we're we're shackled to this ridiculous idea that man is causing changes in the climate. No, we're not. Wow, look at this. The climate has always changed. And plus, whether this has anything to do with the climate or not, mankind cannot stop that. No. Uh, if the no. earth is going to belch like that, it's going to belch. No, I don't think that nobody's saying that's climate related. Are no, they? I know, I know, but what, yeah. where, where I'm relating it to climate, uh, the climate change movement is, these morons actually believe they can do something about the climate. This did more harm in, in two hours, if you want to look at it that way, than you driving the car the rest of your life or whatever. I don't know. How's Fiji and uh, Samoa and. Uh, it's Cook Islands, French Polynesia. Yeah. How how are they doing? Uh, was there devastation? I know I islands? haven't read of devastation, and uh, the number of deaths is unknown. Uh, I guess it's problematic to uh, get to ground zero of this thing and check it out. But holy mackerel! But won't because you're looking at it logically. Yeah. But won't the the climate activists point to this as, a, as an example of C? Yeah. We only have now 11 years left, because didn't we have 12 years left in 2020? I think we're down to 11. Okay. I think we have 11. We only have 11 years left to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, which is, I don't know why we're doing anything. If we only have 11 years left, why are we building? Let's just enjoy it. Why are we building anything? <laughs> Say, it is Martin Luther King Day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it feels differently today than it has in years past. Really? I, I think that, uh, I, I think what's taking place culturally is, not exactly what Martin had in mind. I just don't think this is what he had in his mind. But I want to uh, salute Virginia Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears. You'll recall that name. She was sworn in as the first black woman and first woman, period, to hold her position just days before Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And she urged Americans to have a positive outlook on where the country is in terms of race instead of focusing on the negative. She's uh, she's uh, Kendall Qualls like in that regard, and she's being this shouted Virginia. down. She's the Virginia lieutenant governor. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a Jamaican immigrant who came to the U.S. when she was six, and she hopes that kids today can find inspiration from her own experiences, just like Kendall hopes the same thing yep. from his experiences. I think I'm a visible success story that says to people, "You can do it, and you will do it, no matter your gender, no matter your color, even no matter where you were born." Because here I am. This is not my country and not my culture. I came from Jamaica, and here I have made it, Sears said in an interview with Fox News, because I don't think the conventional media pay much attention to her, uh, noting that she is now the number two official in what was once the capital of the Confederacy. Mm, yeah. The Republican contrasted her approach to those of other politicians who emphasize problems when it comes to race in America. As you... Uh, Are you going to look at the glass half full or half empty? Because if it's half empty, that's a negative view of life, Sears said. That's where too many of our political leaders come from. And all it does is serve their uh, nefarious agenda to divide us and to say you're a victim. You're always going to be a victim. And the other people are the oppressors. So you need us, 
She's got some great thoughts. And people like her terrify the left. Oh, God, yes. Uh, Sears even seemed to take issue with being asked about being the first black woman to be Virginia lieutenant governor, noting how mentioning her race ignores the larger picture of being the first woman of any race to hold the job. And I think that's part of the problem. We, for lack of a better word, segregate ourselves in divisive ways, she said. That's not conductive to healthy relationships. Following the same philosophy of not wanting to divide, new Governor Glenn Youngkin issued an executive order on his first day in office banning the teaching of divisive concepts like critical race theory in public education. Uh, this is not to say that Sears believes race should be ignored or not taught. You have, uh, you have to teach about racial issues, Sears said, warning that not learning history dooms people to repeat it. We need to know where we were going so that we can move forward and correct things. The... The way to right things is to have that opportunity to have a good education. It's to give parents a choice. We're going to teach everything. We're not going to sugarcoat anything. Because the one big thing we've learned from history, as someone once said, is that we don't learn from history. Sears pointed to Nelson Mandela as an example of how to deal with adversity without being weighed down by it. He wasn't looking for retribution. He wanted to say, let's talk about what happened and let's move on because we must, she said. We can't keep dividing ourselves. Those are the kinds of... Uh, teachers were looking for. So on this day, I, I think her message uh, is critically important on Martin Luther King Day. Winsome Sears. Uh, I think Kendall Qualls' message is critically important on uh, this national holiday. Do the people that are promoting this new segregation know anything about segregation? Probably the segregation not. that we uh, had as a country had to fight through and get rid of and eliminate and, and how much pain and suffering and tears and death it caused yeah i i don't think so kenny not well, enough anyway. well how do they not see what they're doing as segregation it's the new segregation i think the president's speech the other day in atlanta was one of the most divisive speeches ever given by a president virtually condemning anyone who doesn't agree with the democrat yep. position yep where have we heard that before hmm, hmm. Mm -hmm. Did he recommend people turn in their neighbors? Are we to that point yet? I hope not. No. I do get the sense, though, that people are starting to wake up. Because I know so many people that, you know, three or four years ago would have fallen in line with that type of thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think they're saying, well, what, what good is it doing me? Because this administration is, is an utter disaster. But the left keeps doubling down on race rather than... Rather than preach that this is a great country with great opportunities, they're making it sound like we're back to about 1912. True, but I guess what I meant by what I said is I think what what the country has been dealing with in terms of COVID, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's opening a lot of people's eyes to, well, what else am I missing here? Because none of this makes any sense whatsoever. That's why this is Blue Monday. Mm -hmm. I'm not very blue, though. Are you blue? Not necessarily. Okay. I, I rarely get blue. I get cold. I was blue Saturday night. I'll tell you, you that were. right now. Man, alive. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with the Ojibwe uh, naming of the moon. Let's let's go with Great Spirit. Yeah. Uh, what well, was the, the other Lakota, one you read? Well, the Lakota is pretty accurate too. Hard times. Yeah, I'm I'm down with the Lakotas. <laughs> okay. yeah. I'm down. We're with in that. hard times. <laughs> I'm rarely am I happy. <laughs> no, but the Great Spirit is a nice thought, isn't it? Yes. How much trouble, the Vikings are in so much trouble. How, How much, much trouble, trouble are they, they in? in? Western Washington University is mulling the idea of scrapping its Viking mascot, claiming it is a figure that is potentially exclusive on the basis of both ethnicity and gender, and that names idolizing conquest are out of line with the university's mm. values. Uh... Western Washington U is reviewing its Viking mascot in part due to requests that the student, that the front, due to requests yep. that the university remove names of four buildings on campus, Huxley College of the Environment, Mathis Hall, Haggard Hall, and the Viking Union over alleged racism, according to a report by the College Fix. While the Haggard and Mathis names were spared, a, uh, a reported strong majority of the university's legacy review task force has recommended that the trustees remove Viking from the Viking Union. 
The task force was concerned about the harm caused task force. by asking all the members of the Western community to identify with a figure that is potentially exclusive on the basis of both ethnicity and gender, the task force said. Furthermore, the task force found names idolizing conquest. It's out of line with the university's contemporary values around honoring local indigenous communities. The Board of Trustees has decided to direct the university to conduct a more thorough assessment of the Viking name in the broader context of the university mascot. This is not the first time that the Viking mascot has found itself under attack. In 2015, students and a professor claimed the Viking mascot Viking mascot is hyper-masculine, hyper-violent, and oh. too aggressive. Oh, toxic masculinity. Oh, we must all be beta males. And I think that <laughs> I think what we've seen from the Wilfs is that they're, they would always err on the side of being woke. There is zero well, I'm just percent telling you, chance I'm just they're telling changing you, the It's man. inevitable that some crackpot around here will say the Viking name is representative of uh, masculine conquest. Well, why Why is a conquest a negative? Well, it said represents Review manifest. It's, it's competitive. Uh, re- represents manifest destiny, wow. Chris, and we've learned manifest destiny Can't is uh, straight evil. That's wow. evil. Now, y- you change the Washington Redskins. I get that. Okay, I can go along I'm with that. I'm not objecting to that. Yeah, but... You can't, you can't just say. I, I think the Vikings, Minnesota Vikings football name. Well, yeah, it'll probably prevail, but it's easy to see it being put in play. Oh, That's what man. the failed academy does. It searches out these they, what they believe to be these discrepancies that stand in the way and impede the achievement of equity. So, what should they be called? The Washington State One Dash Three Eight Seven. Well, what name can you? I'm sure. I'm sure there are people that opposed to the name Buccaneers because they were pirates, mm-hmm. and the Pittsburgh Pirates. I, you, there's no winning with this crowd, so you just have to point out their folly and tell them to the Minnesota take a hike. Minnesota pine cones. Yeah, the pines, the pines. <laughs> what I say to the pirates, you come, you got me right now. That's right. But I got you. That's right. <laughs> I can see. Well, we've been through this before. Yes, we have. With the loons. Oh wait, we already have the loons, yeah. don't we? But it's uh, it's an incredible oh, what these kids are being swallowed up in uh, school is just pathetic. It's just absolutely pathetic. Let's go find a reason to be offended about something. You, it, I used Harumph. to think I used to think people didn't get up in the morning to do that. Now I do. I believe oh, in the Evans. Uh, yes, in the failed academy, I believe there are. That's the goal of many people because it's it's an industry. Right. It's, it's an become industry. an industry. Like race is an industry. Correct. It absolutely is. And, and, and they don't understand that all sports teams uh, were named to. to yeah, incite or invoke fear. Yeah. Um, well, because the twins we're, doesn't really we're do that. Strong, and we're gonna kill you and dominate the you. Minnesota roll over wild. You. The Minnesota uh, Chantilly and lace. <laughs> What's the state flower? Lady slipper. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the lady, lady slippers. Lady slippers. No, that's oh. that's not fair because that excludes men. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, which is probably good. Because, you know, beta males. We'll be back to Blue Monday right after this. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com. 
org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text Next Step to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. Hey, Gealers, it's Reavers here once again for my friends at Hofferman Water. They are an independent water treatment dealer. They offer sales, service, and rental for Connecticut water treatment systems, including water softeners, iron rust and odor filtration systems, and of course, drinking water systems. A new system from Connecticut can do so many things that other water softeners simply cannot. They will cut down on salt usage and protect all of your appliances. Trust me when I say bad water affects nearly every single aspect of your home. Your showers are better, your laundry is better, not to mention your drinking water. And another underrated aspect of this, a brand new state-of-the-art Connecticut water treatment system helps the resale value of your home. Please get in touch with my friends at Hoffman Water today. I had my Connecticut system installed years ago and it has made an amazing difference in the quality of my water. Call them today for that free water analysis. 952-894-4040 or you can just visit them online today at HoffermanWater.com. Hofferman Water, proudly serving the state of Minnesota for over 50 years. It's the end of the world as we know it and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. Twas 30 years ago that Rich uh, threw down stakes, tossed out his shingle, and opened up his Maple Grove lock and safe in Maple Grove. He's the owner. The the only th- really thing he really cares about, us, our satisfaction with his shop and services. Uh, we're talking full residential and commercial lock, safe, and security services there in Maple Grove. Um, uh, um, now, he's got a few brands that you can choose from, but... The big one, of course, the Liberty Safe, made right here in the United States of America. And Liberty recently, uh, thinking wisely, reintroduced the very popular Franklin model. Uh, And that's very good for us. But even better, Rich, he's got over 140 safes in stock to uh, protect you and your valuables, your firearms, jewelry, documents, pictures, wheat pennies, whatever it may be. Rich has got uh, got the safe for you, and he's the matchmaker. He's going to make sure you go out of there with the unit that best fits your needs and your pocketbook. You will get the best the value for your dollar. That address up in Maple Grove, 6901 East Fish Lake Road, and, of course, on the web, maplegrovelockandsafe.com. Reporting isn't what it used to be. Boy, I'll say. Mm. Kevin Ellingson has a great point here. Joe, I was reading an article today about how airplanes land and the proposal on how to reduce emissions during the landing process. I'll paste the link to the article below. Being a student of GL, I noticed something that was absent from the story. You have the same question I do. I'll put what I think is missing at the bottom of this email so you can first read the article. So I went to the article. What is missing here? You're taking the you're taking the bait. How huh? you went to the article? Yeah, I got it. Currently, most planes land at airports. Uh, currently, most planes that land at airports don't they all land at airports? Most, <laughs> pretty we much. Hope. Well, once in a while you'll right. get one in a cornfield. Right. Yes, yeah. We don't want that. Currently, most planes that land at airports descend in a stair step method, where aircraft repeatedly level off and power up the engines during the descent. Under the uh, FAA's new 42 Optimized Profile Descents, OPDs, planes will instead descend from cruising altitude to the runway in a smoother, continuous path with engines set near idle. Are you following this? Maybe your friend at the airport knows something Uh, about this. Yes, he does. If you think about what takes more energy, walking down the stairs or sliding down a slide, that's basically what the plane is doing, FAA spokesperson Matt Lenner said in an interview with ABC News. Uh, and, of course, experts are worried about uh, the climate change, so they want these planes to land okay. differently. And there's really not much more to it, uh, although they believe such a descent uh, would Im- would uh, reduce emissions. What's missing from that story? Hold on. Please. Instead of going in a stair step mm-hmm. the way you land now, they would just descend in a continuous path from altitude. No, you know what to do? It would pause. Check this, this out. It would pause. What's missing? Mm-hmm. What kind of airplane? What kind? Of yeah, I, uh, and to answer uh, email Kevin, they don't. They, I have the same question. Okay, they don't explain how much more fuel is used in both methods. Well, you're on the right track. Okay. If this is such a great way to land, you think the airlines would have been on this 50 years ago? They're always looking for ways to save fuel. Right. 
Yeah, that's their biggest cause. What? If this is such a great idea, why haven't you already done it? <clears throat> Good point. Which leads me now to be very nervous about it. There must be a reason. We've been flying commercially for 100 years. Mm-hmm. There's got to be a reason they stepped that landing. There's got to be a reason. Well, well, isn't there a pressure issue as well? I don't, I don't I'm know. not a technical guy, but when you, everybody knows when you descend, you can feel when they power up, power down, and you're descending into, you know, 5,000. You're basically falling out of the sky, aren't you? Well, like it's controlled, controlled falling. It's, it's like a, Buzz Lightyear. So landing yeah. is a controlled crash. Well, Joe, right. here at Budget Air, yeah. uh, what we're going to do, right. we're just going to kill the engine completely and oh. then just, uh, just kind of yeah, wing it. Maybe yeah. Coast air. <laughs> and just float in. <laughs> yes. It might be a rough landing, but we'll get you down. We have pilots uh, who are GLers. I'm sure I'll get an answer from uh, maybe Carl uh, down in Northfield, flew for years. Uh, why in the hell would you change the landing mechanism now uh, if it's such a great idea? Why haven't you been doing it? You know, at the hometown airline, you have probably at least two to three dozen pilots that listen to the podcast. Well, I want to hear from pilots. Uh, there's got to be a reason the airlines <laughs> land the way they do. Mm. They just not, they didn't make it up. No, there's some science involved, and uh, I don't know what it is, but... You know who's a big fan of the hometown airline? The soul man, Kenny Olson. Let's He's go. He's a huge fan. Let's go. Wait, yeah. I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. Why? Sure, That's I got okay. it. That's, okay. That's why he did it. He wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Do you ever listen to the show that you produce? That was always my favorite challenge from Joe. Well, you're Do you talking, ever listen yeah, to the show yeah, you produce? You know, airplanes, okay, good. They fall out of the sky and gas. <laughs> and, uh, reverse engines. I believe Kenny's line was, this is one of those crap cans take about a week to get to Texas? <laughs> yeah, up and down, up and down, up and down. Get off, get on, get what's off, canceling, get on. What's canceling more flights, weather or uh, lack of staff? Yeah, it's staff, isn't staff. it? I'll answer that for you, Matthew. It's staff. Thank you. But I love how it's framed as, and I'm not blaming you or your friend no, at the airport. It's, no, it's... I love how it's being blamed on COVID. No, no. Well, what is it being blamed on? Because people aren't working. Why? COVID? No. Well, Look, there's... No, I, I, do, I can't officially speak for any airline because I don't know. Uh, I know that there is a shortage of pilots... Uh, everywhere, every airline is short on pilots, and I don't know due if, to illness. Uh, that has a piece of the pie. I don't know what percentage of the pie that is. It just doesn't. The seem, Irish flu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't seem like America to read every day seventeen hundred flights canceled today. Now I can't be, I can't be unwise. Obviously, if it's, there's an ice storm preventing you from landing in Philadelphia. They're probably going to cancel your flight. I understand that. But since before Christmas, uh, it just seems the whole industry is haphazardly being run. It is. And what happens when you cancel a flight, it sets into effect the dominoes of you're not getting back that revenue. It 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 will take you three weeks Mm -hmm. because you'll get a full refund if you get a cancel on any airline. And then you have to rebook it's just it's a it's a big well, mess. But today, I'm sorry, at Terminal no, Two, there were zero cancellations. But honestly, that you guys all made fun of me. That's the main reason I drove to the game on Saturday and back. I didn't want to have to be at the mercy of is my flight going to a be on time, or think, even if it's going to get me there. I think you had the blessing of the uh, the mayor of Garage Logic in the interest of getting back into the studio and being here on Monday. He was for <laughs> you driving over flying. Well, but I do know in in terms of staffing at some of the airports, Joe. I know in one particular case where someone just wasn't feeling it mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. particular well, that, day. Look happen. up the name because it's escaping me. You might remember it. The Milwaukee County District Attorney who uh, is taking a lot of heat. For oh, his, for Waukesha? Well, he's he, uh, yeah, but the, uh, the the criminal was released uh, from custody in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, yep. What's the right. guy's name? Uh, the judge. Uh, lifelong Democrat who tried to then throw some underling under the bus for the release of that idiot who killed people during the Christmas uh, parade. John Chisholm is John the current Chisholm. Milwaukee. John Chisholm, that's what I was thinking of. John Chisholm. Well, listen to this story. An off-duty Milwaukee police detective was shot when intervening in an attempted carjacking last week. Mm. A mother and food delivery driver says she turned off her car, got out, and started walking toward a Shake Shack to pick up an order Thursday when she noticed employees pointing and waving at her. She said another car pulled up next to her where a man hopped out of it and into hers. 
My daughter said, who are you, to him? And he turned and said, whoa, and jumped out. Uh, The woman asked Fox News Milwaukee to remain anonymous. She watched the man run away as her three daughters remained in the car. Then she realized he then... Then, then she then realized he dropped his phone. I went and grabbed the phone and then uh, went and told the restaurant to call 911. She said, call him, please. I have his phone. The man reportedly heard her before rushing toward her in an attempt to tackle her to the ground to get his phone back. That's when the off-duty Milwaukee detective, who happened to be inside the Shake Shack, jumped in. Love it. They were wrestling on the ground, and then you heard two shots, followed by more shots, she said. While that was happening, the restaurant employees were pulling me to the back. I was trying to get to my kids. The woman said despite being shot, the officer kept repeating the suspect license plate number. The mother of three eventually made it back to her car but says she doesn't feel safe as a food delivery driver and started a GoFundMe in an attempt to relocate. The woman considers the detective a hero and hopes to meet him one day to thank him for saving her life. She also expressed gratitude for the Shake Shack employees who helped. Uh, Okay. Uh, The detective involved is a 37-year-old man with seven years of service with the Milwaukee Police Department. He sustained life-threatening injuries and was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Shake Shack issued the following statement to TV News. We are deeply troubled by the events that took place at the Third Ward Shack on Thursday. We wish the victim of this terrible act a full and speedy recovery. The safety of our team and guests is our top priority, and violence has no place. We're working closely to investigate the uh, incident. Okay, here's what I would say. Uh, It's unlikely that that thug was uh, committing his first crime ever. Very unlikely. So, again, is this another moron that's out on the street because— uh, some precious some judge. Chisholm. Uh, what's his name? Jim, John, John Chisholm. John Chisholm. Uh, Regina in, Chu. In the interest of equity, is letting these thugs back out on the street. Most likely. Because I got I got news for you. I bet that wasn't his. I bet that wasn't his virgin cry. I won't make that bet. <laughs> in the uh, what is it? The uh, the institute, the criminally incompetent. The Gumption County Gumption, Institute for the what, criminally incompetent. That's what it is. Yeah. Maybe he needs a class. Don't drop your phone. What? You got to feel for the cops, given these uh, woke prosecutors, district attorneys, and judges. We got a great. This was the. Did you guys see the uh, the cartoon from Alpha News? No. Uh, yeah. Where you got the the cop basically going in the indoor with the bad guy in handcuffs, and then there's Regina Chu on the outdoor with the same guy oh. walking right out the door. Yep. Well, that's what she did with this Coates, Sean Coates, who uh, yep. chased a woman into a firehouse, smashed through it, was. Uh, He's back on the street. I, I hope that woman has some security or some safety. What's your uh, What's your favorite item to get when you go to the Shake Shack? I don't. I've never been to a Shake Shack. We have a couple. The here. Shake Shack, the lobster one. I don't know. No, that's Smack Shack. Smack Shack. Yeah, okay. that's what you're okay. thinking of. Shake Shack must be burgers and shakes. Yes, I'm. Got it. I'm uh, shakes are us. Terribly unaware of what it might be. Terribly Probably. unaware. Do you like a shake? Um, they're in Suchi, boy. Nah, I haven't had a shake in quite a while. Strawberry. No, chocolate. I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, I you don't could like get a behind a double, kamikaze shake. A, a now, what if they put though. whiskey in a shake? Would you be down with no, that? No, no. Like no. a grasshopper. No, no. no. Ice cream yeah. and booze. No. Not, uh, not your deal. Not really. No. Ooh, a brandy Manhattan though might not be bad. Saturday, uh, I had the, for the first time ever, I had a heated coffee caramel fireball drink. Oh my god. Oh, that sounds good. It was fireball. In cre- what is the cinnamon? Oh, it's death. It was very good. You don't like Fireball? I don't like too much Fireball. What is Fireball? (laughs) Cinnamon whiskey. Uh It's yummy, Joe. Mm -hmm. We don't need that. No, we we do, actually. Yeah, Kenny and I do. (laughs) I don't remember if it was a Thanksgiving. Got me through the state fair. (laughs) I don't remember if it was a Thanksgiving or a Christmas Eve, but uh, the Mikulski family brought out the, um, it was the entire, entire family Mm -hmm. for uh, a a Fireball contest of some sort, and it didn't, it didn't end well. Mm Mm-hmm. We, we've sworn it off. I can imagine. That yeah. youngest yeah. daughter of yours, uh, she's my go-to if I'm uh, out at the state fair and I find myself dry. <laughs> I just, uh, hey, hey, uh, could you help a guy out? And, yeah, uh, she uh, she might yeah. be well, uh, uh, what would we say, 
procured. Mm-hmm. She she does that old Angie Ludwig trick where it's in a pop can. You know what's a tough oh. part? You know what's a tough part of having a twenty one year old daughter? I have stayed fair news today. Okay, yeah. let me just tell this as very brief as you wish. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I uh, I did have to get up for work at two o'clock in the morning the other day. Yeah. Was she home yet? And uh, I was getting ready and doing preparations, <laughs> and then I heard a car pull up in front of the house. Yeah. And uh, the door. Yeah. Opened up, and yeah. uh, there she was. She had Ubered home. She was not driving. Um, and then she prepared a full-on kitchen meal at 2.15 <laughs> in the morning. I'm thinking, shouldn't you just go to bed? Are you going to be able to walk up the stairs? Louise. She's That's a, a touch. She's 21. What can I do? And she Ubered. She did everything right. Yep. And it's just, it's it's difficult. Would, would you, ex- huh? would you <laughs> yes. expect anything less from one of, uh, one of your own? I mean, come on. Who's the dad here? I look straight into the camera and say, she was very well trained. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, replace yes. your daughter with me getting home at that same time and trying to prepare a meal. The the only the difference house didn't burn down. Yeah. The only difference is she didn't burn a frozen pizza to a hockey puck crisp. Yeah. And she may have, you know, cooked some powder, reheated some pasta. Speaking of, of fireball and being uh, overserved, have you guys ever revealed stories about your wayward youth to your children? Well, yeah. mine are currently in the next room, right? Um, so we got to be careful. Well, they're just starting to ask about stuff Dad did when he was young. I, I may have been uh, over served uh, um, with on Fireball a couple of weeks ago and uh, started telling stories, and uh, much to my dismay, my my twenty one year old son was sitting right there behind me in the room, Ooh. hearing hearing some of these. Yeah, uh, your, yeah. your stories yeah. would be top notch. My uh, my kids do know a little bit about my um, Highland Theater experience. And what we stashed in the ice machine uh, down below <laughs> while we were uh, what, what we were about, all twenty one, of course. What uh, about you, uh, Joe? Have uh, you told any banana suit stories to the the children no, and grandchildren? I haven't. No, how about <laughs> flying paper? How about flying cardboard? No, Did you ever uh, no, no, take a I little haven't. nip of old no, Henry? I, I how to find not. a uh, spare tire in the they middle know, of the night no, in Anoka? No, they do know that story, and a kid, a grandkid. Uh, Invariably brings it up in school twice a year that his grandfather went to jail. <laughs> Judas Priest. Yeah. That's what the old man uh, said. I mean, it's almost like he's proud of it. Right. Well, yeah. right. well, well you, yeah, you know what mine did? You can't be having a, a criminal for a grandfather. Yeah, he you know? went to jail. It's Papa the Joe in the, in the joint. Yeah. Uh, when you we have state fair news, when we come I, back, I'll, I'll get it. I'll oh, get okay. to it. Yeah, okay. we'll be back. Yeah. yeah. Subtle results, still you, but with fewer lines. Botox Cosmetic, out of botulinum toxin A, is a prescription medicine used to temporarily make moderate to severe frown lines, crow's feet, and forehead lines look better in adults. Effects of Botox Cosmetic may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness may be a sign of a life-threatening condition. Patients with these conditions before injection are at highest risk. Don't receive Botox Cosmetic if you have a skin infection. Side effects may include allergic reactions, injection site pain, headache, eyebrow and eyelid drooping, and eyelid swelling. Allergic reactions can include rash, welts, asthma symptoms, and dizziness. Tell your doctor about medical history, muscle or nerve conditions including ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, myasthenia Gravis or Lambert Eden syndrome and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. For full safety information, visit BotoxCosmetic.com or call 877-351-0300. See for yourself at BotoxCosmetic.com. You know, Patrick Roy. You know, Patrick Royce, I mean, this guy, I mean, what he does is he, he knows his sports. but He doesn't play, but he does know. He, well, he, he played it one time, but, but he doesn't play anymore. He, I mean, even golf. He plays it the next day, he's throwing his clubs off a bridge. I mean, well, well, you know, he did play a lot of golf, you know, let, letting, the, like, letting the golf come to him. But then, then he hit the guy with that shot in the cankle. I mean, it was all over. I mean, it was, it was, it was, ah! It sounds like the band playing in the background, yeah, doesn't it? it? Does who is this, Reavers? This is uh, Dylan Knight. Wow, fellas, it's our one-year anniversary with one hell of a wonderful company in a world of bad gas, Seafoam. It was one year ago tomorrow uh, that the first we've had our first on-air conversation about Seafoam and. Such, I don't know if uh, you remember, I ask you to encapsulate and give me your opinion of Seafoam, and uh, you dropped that million-dollar phrase, a wonderful product in a world of bad gas. 
Uh, and I learned, uh, boy, I've got an interesting story. Do you got an extra, I don't know, 10 minutes? I've got a no. great story no, about bad gas. No. That's a Basically, uh, the moral of the story is uh, gas, you know, it stays good for about a month before it starts breaking down. And what I wanted to mention, at some of the smaller gas stations, maybe out in the outskirts, out in the country, gas can actually go bad in the underground tanks. It's usually not the 97 octane. It's usually that high octane stuff because, you know, us locals, we're tight. We don't buy a lot of it. Uh, so there's a chance if you're rolling through town in your eighty thousand uh, dollar SUV and you're the sheriff of Hennepin County, uh, you should probably, when you fill up with that high octane gas, have a can of sea foam. And that's the other great thing about sea foam; it's available everywhere. The NAC hardware, the convenience store, gas station, the ba- bakery, big box stores, small box stores, the butcher shop, the bar- barber shop. I might stretch the truth a, a little bit, but you get the point. Uh, and in the outskirts, all, sometimes all of those stores are under one roof. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, I know. A wonderful product in a world of bad gas. Sea foam. Hey, I just saw this thing. I got to get one. What? Can't hear voices on TV? New AccuVoice AV157 speaker uses patented hearing te- aid technology to create 12 levels of dialogue clarity. It's come to that for you? Yeah, it's I watched uh, I watched uh, the new Bond movie two weeks ago. And you ruined it for all the listeners. Well, that's all right. And I <laughs> No, struggled. it's not all right. <laughs> I struggled to hear, anyway. I struggled to understand the dialogue. I yeah. Maybe I need one of these things. Why don't you go huh? to Starkey? I don't want to hear it. Starkey as a uh, sponsor. Starkey, come on. I'll I'll oh. sign up too. Yeah. We need that. Man, uh, this is neat. So you you, you wear like a pair of headphones? I've you? never seen anybody so excited about a newspaper ad. I don't know if you wear I think it's just a little device you put in front of your TV and out comes the dialogue you can understand. Big oh, so cool. it's it's not one of those deals where you can listen in on conversations no. across the uh, cafeteria or anything like that. But the story right next to that ad <laughs> is the uh, news of the passing of Michael Lang, one of the founders of Woodstock. Uh, Lang, along with Artie Kornfeld, John Roberts, and Joel Rosenman, uh, put together the uh, Three Days of Peace and Music up in Bethel, New York at Max Yasger's farm. Have you been there? Uh, only in post-Woodstock days. Yeah, I same here. There. Yep. Uh but I went to the pop festival that preceded Woodstock, but didn't get any attention, and that was the Atlanta Pop Festival. Oh, held at the Atlanta Speedway. Yeah, at the track with many of the same acts in Atlanta. Then going to Woodstock. Right. Yeah, really. Yeah, uh, I just been kicked out of the band, and, and uh, uh, with another guy, and uh, three of us went to. Uh, Road trip it? Yeah, we road trip to Atlanta. How yeah. much weed did you have in the car? Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> Probably like a half pound or so. Uh, I suppose. No, Squeaks was going to bring that later on in the day. <laughs> who, you know, who, name the acts you saw. That, that this is far more interesting to me than anything anybody could say about Woodstock. Name me some of the acts. Look up, look, look, look up Atlanta Pop Festival. Was it two days? Nineteen sixty-nine. Three days. One day. Well, we were only there for a day. And First I remember day? it was dreadfully hot, and there yeah. wasn't anything to drink. You couldn't find any water. And this preceded. This was before Woodstock. I believe this preceded Woodstock. When was Woodstock? Was it in August? 69. No, yeah. I know. Was it yeah, in August? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Bethel, New York, right? Yeah. 20 miles south of Atlanta on the 4th of July, Friday week in 1969, more than a month before Woodstock. Yep. This is say the Axe. Uh, crowds as high as 150. Let's see. Axe. Is this Atlanta. the one you hitchhiked from? Yeah. Gotcha. <clears throat> Blood, what? Sweat, and Tears. Yep. Booker Wait. T and the MGs. Okay. Butterfield Blues Band. Yep. Canned Heat. Yeah. Chicago Transit Authority. Yep. Joe Cocker. CCR. Dave Brubeck with uh, Jerry Mulligan. The Dave Brubeck Trio. Uh, Delaney and Bonnie and Friends. Yeah. Grand Funk. Yeah. Uh, with 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 the best lyrics of all time. What were they going to do? We're an American band. Yeah, right. we're an American, American band. band. Right. We're coming to your town. Right. We'll because. help you party down. Yeah. We're an because. American band. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ian and Sylvia, not sure. Tommy James and the Shondells. Yeah. Janis Joplin, Al Cooper, Zeppelin, Pacific Gas and Electric, Johnny Rivers, Spirit, the Staple Singers, Sweetwater, Ten Wheel Drive, and Johnny Winter. <laughs> Who there did you, uh, of all those people, who, who did you see? Do you remember, was it Zeppelin? I remember it, Spirit. 
Okay, Spirit. I, I really like that group. I also saw Spirit play locally at what was then called the Labor Temple. Oh. Over behind the U over there on uh, University what is it now? Avenue. What is it now? Well, it's a, still a building there. I don't know what it's called. It might be still called the Labor Temple. The Labor you didn't Temple. see CTA, did you? I might have. You know, it's getting the, to be a long time ago, Kenny. I don't yeah. really recall. On the Monday following the festival, July 7th, the festival promoters gave Atlanta's music fan uh, fans a gift, a free concert in Atlanta's Piedmont Park featuring CTA, Delaney, Bonnie, and Friends, and Spirit, all who have played at the festival, and the Grateful Dead, mm. who had not. Um, um, did you can any apricots in the porta potty? <laughs> did the dead play at Woodstock? I don't think so. No. Uh, yes, I they believe did? they did, yeah. <laughs> I think they did. By the way, the Labor Temple is now the current Aveda Institute. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Well, in any event, uh, Woodstock, to, well, in my estimation, looked like a horrible mess to yeah, be, it, to it, be uh, in. No, no, back, back to your story. Uh, yeah. You rode down together? And, and no, we, you, one of the guys had, uh, the guy who's now the manager of the Foo Fighters, his grandma lived in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, in, in quite an opulent setting. Okay, and so there was plenty of room for so me and uh, another guy that got kicked out of the band and 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 John we flew to Atlanta. Okay, and then we uh, then from Atlanta we went to Miami. What? Yeah, I think we flew to Miami, but then we're out of money, so from Miami back to St. Paul we hitchhiked. Oh my God, you hitchhiked? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Did you have to give any truckers any? Uh... <laughs> Inspiration, <laughs> you know, no, but I, I just help them out a little bit. Inspiration, I've told awake. you guys the story before, <laughs> where uh, one of the guys, a black guy, that picked us up leaving Miami, uh, pulled over to the side of the road and said to my buddy, "You drive for a while. I got to take a nap." And then he held his gun in his hand the whole time. Oh boy. Uh, you know that uh, <laughs> you couldn't cut a the semi? tension with the knife there. Oh, huh? No, no, it was a car. It was a oh, car. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll try that, but just don't hit me as hard as you did the uh, other guy. One time, and I uh, one of the rides was from my itinerant newspaper printer, who was back then. You could still literally follow the sun, and he was heading up north to catch on as a printer in a newspaper. Yeah. And all his clothes were in the car, hanging on a rack in the back. And he that's how he made his living. He would drive around and become a. He was an itinerant printer. Huh. Wow. Set, he would set type at the newspapers and what have you. You had some experiences, bro. Well, you there are some. hiked across the country. Mm-hmm. How did you ever you write not, about it? I was just going to ask the same you thing. Know, I never did. Why? What is wrong with you? I don't know. Huh. Where, uh, and I know the title of it. Where has my thumb been? <laughs> well, are you talking about that trucker? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, what were you doing? Guess where my thumb has been. Uh, how old were you? And were you earning a living? Were, were you well, just I was until I teenager. got kicked out of the band. Yeah, we were making. Yeah, that's a tough one. So it was before wages. your writing career. Yeah, I was still in college. Huh? Yeah. Fascinating. And sometimes you're interesting, Joe. Well, I'm trying to stay <laughs> get back here to Woodstock. I don't yeah, feel that I missed ahead. anything by not being there. I know it was supposed to be a seminal moment but in a generation. Have you and... ever been someone that suffered from FOMO? What's FOMO? Fear of missing Fear of out. Missing out. Mm-hmm. Not really. Yeah, no, I didn't. You don't no. strike me as someone that has that. No, it just looks gross. It just, and it, I, I it, it, all I re- remember thinking is, God, I'm glad I'm not there. Where would I sleep? Because yeah. I'm not sleeping in the mud. I'm going to say no, something. Very comfortable. I'm going to say something right now, and John's going to probably be mad at me tomorrow if he gets around to listening to this. That Jimi Hendrix uh, national anthem yeah. thing. Eh, eh. It was tedious. Yeah, it really was. It, was tedious. it really was. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. Sorry, Johnny. But I don't know what I I don't have deep thoughts about Woodstock. I don't have deep cultural thoughts about it. I well, they were screwed from the outset. I mean, the gates were up for about five minutes before the fences came down. And I don't it turned, think uh, turned into a free thing. I don't think Lang, Cornfield, Roberts, and Rosenman made any money. No, they Not lost money, money and yeah. they were way in way over their head. I think the money, if any, uh, came with the release of the movie. Right. And it was, they had great foresight in filming virtually everything. Mm-hmm. That might have saved them. They might have recouped yeah. some money. And it is a fun, interesting movie. And, and that kind of puts you there and it makes you realize, ah, oh, gross. Ugh. I mean, the movie was out the next year, 1970. Yeah. yeah. And then wasn't it the same year that 
the music pretty much died with the Stones at Altamont? Uh, I believe I believe Altamont was also sixty nine. Yeah, and they've recently discovered new footage right. of that right. um, that I thought was a little interesting. By now, the way, did because uh, I know a couple of people that attended the reunion in ninety nine. Oh, uh, that was an S show. Yeah, it was awful. Violence. I almost went and... with them, but I kind of had a feeling it was going to be a disaster. So yeah. I didn't. I ended up not going. Well, with them. Lang and his in his guys, they sought to mount a concert in 2019 on the 50th anniversary, but ultimately they scrapped that due to financial problems and difficulty securing a venue. Mm. So I never did pull that off. I'm unaware of 1999. That is a neat spot, though, in uh, Bethel, New York. Um, kind of reminds you of the southeastern portion of Minnesota, the rolling hills and creeks and the like. Well, I'll tell you where it's near. It's near Cooperstown. Yep. And I went to Cooperstown uh, to cover the induction of Harmon Killebrew, and uh, the, a kid I used to have then, 10, was with me because uh, he wanted to, obviously he was a baseball fan, and I wanted him to see all that. But as long as we were so near Bethel and Maxie Asger's farm. I told him that whole story as we drove through there. I'm yeah. a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Cooperstown was everything. I was everything a, a kid could want it to be. Oh man, I wish I, w- I I went when I was 30, but I wish I'd gone when I was younger. Yeah, that would have been cool. It was everything a kid could have wanted to be. Yep. And, I had and fun the, that it was an adult. And the movie showing at the theater downtown was The Natural. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah. When we uh, when we were there, for, for all I know, maybe that shows every right, summer. Right, right. That or the alternate it's on between uh, yeah. what is it? The Sandlot. Yeah. yeah. Because when we were there, uh, there was a little league game being played at the field at the same yeah. time. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. You're willing to believe anything if you believe this hoople had carved a bat out of a branch and went out. Oh, there that and sure played hit, with got hit goals. by lightning. Yeah. Give me a bleep. Oh, I was more impressed Based by on the true story. Bush Estate. Remember the Bush Estate up there, going no. by the gates. No. Uh, Anheuser, the Bush family. That we see it from the lake? <clears throat> you drove past it driving into the city. I guess I don't remember Big that. white, uh, it was Anheuser Bush. That was that a year. different trip we took to Cooperstown. When Royce he, stayed at the wrong house. Yeah. My first uh, trip to yeah. Cooperstown was 84, 1984. <laughs> okay. Then we went back in what, 01 or 02? For, yeah, for Kirby. Kirby. Yeah. Kirby that, and uh, that, Winfield. Winfield. Is that when Royce went, walked in the door, went right to the bathroom, right. hung out for wrong about 45 yeah. minutes, and then left? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the wrong address. Didn't close the door. <laughs> hey, don't go I'll be done in five minutes. Hang 30, on. 30, 40 minutes. You might want some glade for that room. You might want to stay off this level for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Open the windows. <laughs> See ya. How <laughs> houses look like. Stay off the level. <laughs> I got state fair news for you in just a moment. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. You cannot stop him. He'll just make a move. Joe Suchere. Well, the state fair is back in the news. They have an uncanny ability to keep their name (coughs) in print. They're like the NFL, are they not? Great marketing. Fairgoers will pay more to spend less time at the upcoming Minnesota State Fair. Say it isn't so. Organizers announced Sunday that ticket prices will increase by a buck for the 2022 fair. That means regular admission will run $17 now. Wow. And kids and seniors will cost 15 bucks. Admission for uh, children under four remains free. And I guess you can go somewhere online and find... uh, discounted tickets until January 31st. The fair will also open an hour later and close an hour earlier for the first 11 days from Aug 25 to September 4. The fair's hours will be 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. On Labor Day, the final day of the fair, organizers lopped off only an hour. It will open at 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. after opening at 6 a.m. last year. The fair was open until midnight last year? Mm Mm-hmm. Why did, why did I not know that? I mm-hmm. thought they closed around 10. Because anyone with uh, half a brain would not be there at midnight. Yeah, right. I guess, yeah, that's... Well, if you wanted to pick a good fight, that's the time to go, 10 to midnight. You, you know what? With the added increase, not that a dollar is you know, going to make or break a family's decision to go to the fair or not, mm-hmm. but I wonder if some... Because you know everybody is now worried about their bottom line, given what we've went through the past two years... I wonder, will some you know radio stations or some other operations decide, well, the cost isn't really worth it anymore? Well, what 
Why? Because For I know an hour. You mean I know? No, 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 no. Because of the added cost. Because I know personally two local radio stations that did not go to the fair this year because of costs hmm. this past summer. They weren't even out there at all. Well, these announcements follow the state fair's annual meeting. In a letter after the meeting, General Manager Jerry Hammer, our guy Hammer, called the 2021 edition miraculous, uh, citing that it was pulled off despite the ongoing pandemic. The letter also said the fair reported an operating loss of $1.3 million. I find that hard to believe. I do, too. Uh, that was uh, following a $16.5 million loss when it was canceled in 2020. But wait a minute. Think about it. Crowds were really thin. <laughs> Crowds they were thin. For were. those of us that don't like the fair, the fair was awesome last I year. I agree with not Kenny. Every <laughs> booth, not every booth was open. So they didn't get their taste so from they, a lot they of get, people. Uh, they yeah. get from food, from uh, the merchandise mart. You're, they get their money first. Well, I, I got news for you. I've got the world's smallest violin for the fair. Not making money when they've been well, printing it left and right. True, but uh, we're, we're rooting for Hammer. Oh, yeah. Sure. Hammer time's got to sure, right. pull through. Only because they come to us all the way from Marloth Park and move them along to South Africa from the traveling Lymans. Mm-hmm. On this day. January 17th. Blue Monday. In 1934, banker Edward G. Bremer was kidnapped at the corner of Goodrich and Lexington Parkway in St. Paul. Did you hear about Carpet the Bremer, skating, right? Uh, yes, on Feb 7, after his family paid a $200,000 ransom, that'd be a lot of money back then, uh, Bremer was freed in Rochester. Bremer's remarkable memory leads investigators to the kidnappers, the Barker Carpus Gang, the members of which would be caught or killed by 1936. Carpus was the uh, brain behind that. Those Barker boys were idiots. Mm-hmm. It wasn't there, uh, weren't they the, uh, the sons of Ma Barker? Yep, yep. Yeah, they were out in Matamidi for a while. Yeah, I can show were. you the house they lived in. Yeah, yeah. Two hundred thousand dollars in nineteen thirty four is equivalent to purchasing power of about four million, uh, four point one million dollars today. Wow! And was Carpus Al Carpus? Uh, yes. I think. Yeah, Alan Carpus. Yeah. Uh, um... <sighs> that Bremer Bank remains in up. the news because of trustee problems and, and uh, what there you have Alvin, some, Alvin, Alvin, Alvin yeah, Al yeah, Carpus. Yeah. 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 They do have some um, issues right now with their uh, foundation and their their bank. They have some fiduciary issues. Isn't that house yes. right on the uh, right on the Parkway there on the St. Paul side, right right before the curve? Goodrich and Lex. Oh, Goodrich and Lexington. It's oh, straight. It's a block, it's two blocks, uh, two blocks south of the Lexington restaurant. Huh. One. Of, okay. Then there was a shootout in that apartment complex there too, involving, yeah. uh, I believe, Al Capone. Uh, no, I thought oh, it was not uh, Compone, um, not J.D. Longfellow. What's the other guy's name? I Starts with an L. Larry. No. Nope. I'll find it. Peter. I, I can see your house from here. J.D. Salinger. That's an author. J.D. Salinger. He's not the gangster? Oh, he wrote Who Catcher in the Rye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's over, overrated. J.D. the Rockefeller. That kid, boy. <laughs> How would you like to slap that kid? That's what that kid needed was some good discipline. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, G. Call right. old J.D. Oh, Let him oh, get there. Hey, J.D., we're going to go read the bank. Do we have to get no, our I'm money back for this right one today? Now. I'm writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's where he went. He he didn't go with the gang. That's what I'm thinking. The story right. is J.D. Salinger was part of the gangster, but... He wanted to write, and every time they wanted to rob a bank or um, a heist, um, he said, I'm writing. Anyway, who am I thinking of? You're thinking of Garage Al Logic Capone. YouTube page. Who are the other mobsters that were in town? Uh, I don't know. Jesse James. No. Like us on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, let me hear Pod Do MN something post. on Twitter. Don't forget to uh, visit the Garage Logic closeout online shop you, you at garagelogic.com. Uh, I sure did, Joe. Where? I sure did, Joe. JD. We'll, uh, we'll try it again tomorrow. What the hell? Is it Ma Barker? Uncle Barker? No? Bob Barker. Bob Barker. The ga- and he wanted to do a game show. The shows. price is wrong, That's Bob. Right. That's right. Yes, sir.